Welcome to the Popcorn Talk Network. For the online broadcast network that features movie discussion, news, and interviews, press one. Popcorn Talk. We talk movies. From the Popcorn Talk Network, the number one online broadcast network for movie talk, this is the Cosplay Coach. Costume breakdowns and tips and tricks to create your own. And now, the coach yourself, Meredith Placco. Friends. It's just Meredith Placco's friends today. Yeah, we tried to we tried to make it Meredith Placco, the cosplay coach's friends, as opposed to and friends, because Meredith, as you guys can see, is unfortunately not here today because uh, she's come down with a serious case of con crud, it sounds like. Yeah. That is, I, I got a little bit of it too. It's pretty much any major con, you're gonna get the con crud. Yeah. So that's why even if you were drowning in hand sanitizer, like and I was the whole weekend. emergency. It's gonna happen, man. It's just unavoidable, totally unavoidable. But it's it's worth it. And, and sadly, somehow appropriate for our uh, Comic-Con wrap-up episode that one of us <laughs> is uh, too ill to attend it. So yes, welcome to the Cosplay Coach. I'm Emma Fife. This is Elena Jordan. I'm you, Elena Jordan. You this can, is Emma Fife. You can find me on Twitter, <laughs> at Emma Fife. <laughs> You can find me on Twitter at Elena Jordan. Go you, figure, look at that. I know, it's just our names. <laughs> <laughs> and you can find all of us uh, on Twitter at The Cosplay Coach. Uh, and if you guys want to ever tweet at us, we've had people tweeting at us today. Unfortunately, due to some YouTube updates, we're not able to stream live today, which we we're super duper bummed about. Uh, but some of you guys were already aware of this and you've been tweeting stuff at us and posting stuff on our Facebook page. You can also find us on Facebook. And uh, so we'll be able to address some of your more recent questions questions and questions from past episodes in addition to doing our Comic-Con wrap-up today. Uh, first, I want to talk to you guys a little bit about iTunes. You should go there and subscribe to this podcast, rate us five stars, leave us a review. We love getting reviews. Uh, you can also find us on YouTube. And if you are listening on iTunes, I do highly recommend going over to YouTube to watch this podcast because it is a very visual medium. A lot of the time we do actually have materials here and we use a lot, a lot, a lot of images to uh, illustrate everything that we're talking about. And today we're gonna be having some actual videos from the con showing on the show. So you should totally watch the show on YouTube if you're not already watching <laughs> it on YouTube today. So yes, uh, Comic-Con, Elena, how, what are your feelings? Did you have a good time? Uh, Comic-Con is amazing every single year. Every con, for the most part, though, you just come back feeling awesome. Even if you're sick, you still just feel like yeah. mentally just re-energized. It's like health and mana bar just goes all the way up the second you walk into the convention yeah. center. So it's awesome. Yeah, totally. I know. I had gone to Comic-Con thinking I was going to go back on like Friday night because I was going to be responsible and go work at my day job. Uh, but I walked in on Thursday morning, picked up my badge and went, nope, I'm calling out sick on Saturday. <laughs> I'm proud <laughs> Don't of do you that. that. Don't do not do that, guys. No, do it. I don't told follow, her to. Don't follow my example. Uh, what was your favorite thing, do you think, that uh, at Comic-Con oh, this year? Oh, man. I would say probably getting to meet some of our fans was really cool. Yeah. We, um, as Emma mentioned, love hearing from you guys. So, And then being able to see you when we go out to cons is just a phenomenal experience and just... Fills us with the joy. It so. does. It was, a, it was a joyous, joyous time. <laughs> it was. So, yeah, we got... We met Gwen and we got to hang did. out with her. We did, yeah. Uh, Gwen Stacy, as you guys know, we were doing our uh, McCall's Cosplay Challenge contest for Comic-Con, and we all kind of unanimously decided that uh, there could be no other winner than Gwen Stacy. And so even though she wasn't in uh, cosplay for the event, uh, we did... Um, give her the award. Sorry, guys, my computer. That's the award music. That's the award music. That's the award. There we go. Uh, <laughs> yes, but uh, but Gwen Stacy was our winner, and we actually took a little video with her that we want to show to you guys. So I'm gonna let Marissa cue that up. And uh, hey guys, we'll, so here we'll we are you. on the floor at Comic Con, and we are with Miss Gwen Stacy. Yay! Uh, <laughs> for all of you uh, you who tune into Cosplay Coach, you'll know Gwen. She's one of the most active and coolest users in our chat room, and she's a fantastic cosplayer. And uh, Gwen, what are you doing out here for San Diego? Um, I'm here for the website that I write for, Agents of Geek. So just covering the con, 
doing press interviews, trying to get all the cosplay photos that I can, <laughs> uh, and just trying to have fun. It's my first year, so I'm trying to have fun while also working. Yeah. It's kind of hard to balance, but I'm making it work. It is. I yeah. I, I just did press for Anime Expo, and I was like, I can't cosplay. I just I have to carry all this gear and interview people. It's too much. <laughs> That's why spirit hoods are great for closet cosplay. I can just rock my cat ears anytime I want. <laughs> I just carry things in heels and fall down occasionally. It's fine. No, uh, Quinn, I know you're not in costume, but you have sent some of the most amazing costumes to us to showcase. And we actually wanted to present you with today the McCall's Grand Prize Pack. Uh, six patterns of your choice. <laughs> Thank you. Gwen, Gwen, oh my God. Gwen, 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 Gwen. <laughs> You can go on their website and pick whatever patterns you want in size, uh, fill this out and email it. And uh, thank you so much, McCall's. Thank and thank you so much, Gwen, for supporting us and doing all the amazing costumes that you do. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. We love you. <laughs> all right, now we're going to go find some more costumers all right, to interview, and uh, we will see you guys in a bit. Yay. Yay. <laughs> you mean that? Yeah. I did, yeah. I, I put that fancy lower third on there. <laughs> it makes it look so professional. <laughs> nice, nice work. I like it. I know, it's good. Thank you so much, Gwen, for just being awesome. Gwen is so she awesome. She really is so cool. I was like all overwhelmed. All you guys are so awesome. We yeah. Love Ugh. I mean, and, and you guys all, any of you who, who participate in our chat regularly or follow our antics on Twitter, like you all know Gwen Stacy. And, and we've featured her cosplay on several episodes. Uh, we had her on the alternative New Age Disney princesses. She did the waitress version of mm -hmm. Tiana, which is amazing. amazing. So good. Uh, and she also did a, a spandex Catwoman suit as well, which we saw in the superheroes and spandex episode. And we just love her and she's so supportive of us and even earlier today before we knew we were going to have live stream issues like she's tweeting out like don't miss cosplay coach you got to tune in and we just we just really really appreciate so congratulations. you congratulations so much Gwen congratulations Hope you enjoy your prize you totally totally deserve the prize uh so Moving on, of course, uh, we were at Comic-Con doing some coverage for the Cosplay Coach, which you guys are all tuned into right now. Uh, so we did spend a little time running around the floor uh, doing some cosplay interviewers, and I compiled a little video for us, complete with very professional-looking lower thirds. <laughs> and <laughs> nice uh, we want to share with you guys some of the uh, interactions we had with cosplayers at Comic-Con this year, as well as some footage of some of the really cool stuff we saw out on the floor. So we're ready to show so this video. So we have found some awesome Sailor Moon cosplayers here at San Diego Comic-Con. I'm here at Comic-Con today with Kia. That's her real name, but yeah. today she's just Storm. Hey guys, we are here with Sam and she is an amazing Harley Quinn. So we are here with Krieger and his virtual girlfriend. I am here with Victoria and Brian, AKA Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask. So we are here with Devin and she looks amazing. And I am here with Optimus Prime, who surprisingly sounds nothing like Peter Cullen. Hello there. So we are here with a really amazing interpretation of Anna and Elsa. I guess the, the world went went a little wrong after uh, you took over, huh? We're doing a little interview. Uh, Inception right now. Interviewception. We're yes. interviewing each other. With Catwoman from Sharp News. Now, what inspired you to undertake this incredible project? Actually, kind of happened by accident. I didn't really mean to. <laughs> 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 and it uh, just kind of happened, really. I just, I love Transformers. I've been a fan since I was a kid. I watched the cartoon growing up. I started Cute. coming to Comic-Con about 10 years ago. And then I started looking at the cosplayers saying, I wonder if I could do that. Well, when I was thinking of cosplays, I had just watched the X-Men movie. Nice. And I liked, I had liked Halle Berry's, like, you know, one piece suit. Mm -hmm. But when I was looking online, I saw this, this woman in an outfit just like mine. I was like, I have uh, to wear it. Babs Tarr, who is the current artist for Batgirl, she also does a lot of her own sort of art and does a lot of um, some fun Sailor Scout uh, kind of Bosu Kuzu, like the bat biker versions. Yeah. And we thought it'd be kind of a fun play on that. So this is Peggy Carter dressed as Captain America. It's based on a fan art by Alex Schlitz. She's amazing. Uh, we have a friend. I got to give a shout out to Tara. She said, uh, what, Furiosa. That would be great. 
And it went from there. And I thought, well, we started it with just these two. And then, um, well, we needed our little war boy. And instead of a blood bank for the war boy, I'm actually his snow bank. What inspired you to dress up as some of the, probably one of the most unhinged personalities from cartoons? Well, I've been marathoning Archer, and uh -huh. I'm a twin myself, so I can sympathize with being a mad That's scientist a and basically Ooh. a clone. <laughs> and uh, as for uh, Virtual Girlfriend? Uh, you know, I always wanted to do like a couple's cosplay, and it was a costume that I could get him on board with. Are you guys an actual couple or just a cosplay couple? We're an actual, We're an actual couple. couple. <laughs> I've actually been, I've been really trying to get into character this convention and um, I've been stealing stuff from the exhibit hall. I've got this whole stash like in my car now. It's great. <laughs> See, you know the way to do it. Yeah. It's just burgle things. <laughs> <laughs> I just edited a few funny things of you. So you made this yourself? Yeah, I made it. Uh, it took me like three months, but I made everything myself, including the boots. I made this one, and I helped him out with this one. Yeah. We bought a lot of the pieces on Etsy, like different <laughs> handmade items, like his pocket watch. And oh my gosh, the pocket watch is amazing. Yeah. You made the Dracula medallion? Yeah. Yeah. Indeed, I was fortunate enough to have wonderful help from uh, my father and my boyfriend. Um, but we made everything from scratch, so no cool. patterns. We just kind of made it up as we went. I made my own pattern actually, with a, and I had help from um, my mother. She actually helped me out. Girl, I get my mom to help me with my cosplay too. <laughs> We're at the Diamond Comics booth, and they were super nice to give us some Sailor Moon blind boxes. I'm we're so excited. So excited. <laughs> Should we open them? Yes. Okay, okay, we're gonna open we them. Go. This right, is right. gonna be really awkward with the microphone. Um. Wow. You know, oh, it's and it's. <gasps> okay. 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 <laughs> Who did you get? Oh, oh you got that. Oh, 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 you're in it. Now, in terms of doing your costumes, uh, what were one of the hardest aspects for these? Oh, I think that's a question for her. Uh, well, I mean, this isn't my first cosplay, but like getting all the little detail parts, you're like, wait, does she have long sleeves, short sleeves? What? Meredith in the video. And so it's just like, okay, I guess I'm just gonna have to marathon all her episodes again. And actually finding a wig was like the hardest part. It's It was really hard, especially working with leather the first time. This is the first costume I made, so. Yeah, I tackled This is leather. the first cosplay that you've ever did, and you yeah. did the whole thing with the leather? Yeah. It was awful. It was awesome, though. <laughs> that is incredible. Now, what all are the different materials that went into making up this costume? So the entire skeleton is basically made out of cardboard. Okay. Layered with EVA foam. That's the best. Uh, it, it really is. It's fantastic <laughs> yeah. stuff. Um, and then it's got some plexiglass accents yes. and uh, some steel rods for reinforcements. Actually, she made the arm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do costuming for some bigger companies. And um, so he was made foam, fabricated, whatnot. The arm is, some of it is molded, painted. Some of it's real. Uh, this is made out of a double knit jersey. Um, it's really expensive, but super worth it. Uh, that way I didn't need any enclosures or anything. It just pulls right over my head and um, it's kind of like lined by itself, you know? Optimus, this is my second Optimus costume. Nice. My first one was a G1 Optimus, all cardboard, very light. Um, and then I decided, I, wanted, I wonder if I could kick it up a notch here. So. Basically just poly theme. Okay. So the stretchy kind of Leather. The whole thing weighs about 65 pounds once it's on. Everything else was like, you know, eBay or thrift shop and then mashing it together. So a lot of our friends actually already wear vests that have studs all over them. So yeah. um, we kind of just mimicked that a little bit, but bought some yeah. fun studs. I wanted to do the kind of epaulets that um, the Sailor Scouts have, kind of mimic that. And 
It was definitely fun. <laughs> this is actually like a, a suit I've actually worn before, like a full black suit, but we just kind of added the cape onto it and also, yeah, the pocket watch. Look at these shoes. These shoes are insane. Like, they're so good. Check this out. Look at that. What? She's got these incredible white contact lenses in, but there's little dots in them, so it looks yeah. like you can't actually see. Mesh, mesh contact lenses, yeah. So I've been walking around and people are like, whoa, are you blind? And we got to see the back. The patches on the back oh, are yeah. the best. Look at these. Love, justice, and carnage, and fight like a magical girl. Are you the, are you this tall? Or are you standing on the ground? Do you have some sort of platforms? Um, I am on platforms. I wish I was that tall. <laughs> In real life, I'm actually about 5'2". You if so you guys much. can see the detail on it, it's phenomenal. I love how the sleeve came out. That's like what I'm really into. It all lined up really well. I have to ask, where did you get the pocket watch from? Oh, uh, she actually got it from me. She got it on Amazon. Uh, on Amazon? Yeah. Stop okay. it. You know, in terms of costume design, we always talk about having the believability. Do you have any tips out there for people who want to do their own interpretations of characters in an original world, how they can keep it grounded in both worlds and recognizable? I think it's finding finding items and things and working with what you have. It's, I find that there's some people who walk around and they're very strict about that's not accurate, that's not this. If it feels good for you and you like it and you, you like how it's fitting into your world, I say go for it. You know, if what you have to work with is duct tape, then fine. Find a creative way to use the duct tape and have fun with it. I love it. Just be bold and be creative and have fun with it. It's definitely, I don't know, just do what you want to do. It's Comic-Con, why not, you know? <laughs> Make it comfortable for yourself. It's no fun to cosplay in a costume that you just want to take off in an hour. Boo to all those people that are like, it's not accurate, it's not what this and that. You know what, you're doing your best and enjoy it because the more you do it, the better it's going to be and the more you look and research, so research, um, the better you're going to find the, what you're looking for. Do you have any uh, tips for anybody who would maybe want to cosplay Harley as well? Uh, that's a hard one. Um, basically, just, you know, if it's hard, continue doing it, because it was hard, but you got to persevere. So don't be like me and give up and make socks. <laughs> I mean, you could do that too. <laughs> do you have any tips for anyone out there who wants to create their own Krieger and virtual girlfriend? An actual virtual girlfriend? Yeah, an actual virtual girlfriend. How would you go about doing that? Oh, uh, you're definitely going to need, like, like a supercomputer to do all the rendering. So I'm going to say lasers just because. Um, yeah, and, and as for the mad scientist thing, it, the really cool part is that you don't need a real degree or accreditation. You can just start doing that in your garage. It's true. Yeah, it's just kind of like Steve Jobs. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. So for anybody who is kind of getting into cosplay for the first time, do you have any tips for them? Just like do it. Just keep sewing. You know, there's no wrong way like to cosplay. Just like do whatever makes you happy, and like your passion will shine through, and you'll look amazing. Any tips for uh, fans out there? Um, well, if you're gonna build a virtual girlfriend, just get help. about being um, Jessica Rabbit? Uh, everything except the shoes. Because the shoes, high heels, and I don't get along. Well, you look phenomenal. Are you having a good con? Yeah, it's been so much fun. It, like, it's my first Comic Con, so yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah, it's very fun. Getting stopped a lot, and it's <laughs> awesome. I bet you've been stopped just a billion times by everybody geeking out over how awesome it is. Uh, yeah, like a, a few people here and there. Like, I've been sort of just like doing my own thing, scooting around. I just like it feels so good to wear that like it's not it's not uncomfortable or anything. So I've just been really enjoying the convention dressed as Peggy. I don't know if you've had the experience of uh, when you cosplay as a Sailor Guardian, a lot of the time it's kind of being like a Disney princess of the con. Have you yeah. had a lot of little kids pawned off on you today? Yeah, I definitely noticed that. It's so cute though. I love yeah. the little kids. Parents like to give their children to me. <laughs> like, oh, hold my child, take a picture. You know? I'm like, well, yeah, but if they cry, I'm giving them back. <laughs> What's been your favorite part of the con so far? Um, 
walking around and talking to people. Well, recently, you know, all my friends just graduated and stuff like that, so this is like one of the big conventions that we all come together and we see each other. I just really like uh, stopping with people and taking pictures of them because they really enjoyed our costumes, so I like to make people happy too. Well, thank you ladies so much and have an amazing Comic Con. Well, thank you so much for stopping to talk to us today. You look absolutely fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Sam. Thank you look you. amazing. Well, thank you guys so much for stopping by. Thank you so much for stopping and talking yeah. to us today. So thank you ladies so much and uh, I guess go enjoy your con, but don't, don't get too warm. Thank you so much for stopping to talk to us. I'm just unbelievably impressed. I can't do this. This is not, this is beyond my skill set. Killing it, crushing it, loving it. Ah, it's so good. Amazing Comic Con. <laughs> I think we've seen a lot. There's some great costumes this year. And uh, wow, I can't wait to come back next year and dress up some more. What and WonderCon, too. Oh my God, yeah. So many cons. So many. Just all, all the cons, all the time. All right, real quick, what was your favorite thing we saw this weekend? Oh man, it has to be that Optimus Prime. Holy moly, that girl was amazing. And yes, women love Transformers. <laughs> I would say just everybody who's been so incredibly enthusiastic about everything and just so many awesome people meeting more awesome people. It's an amalgamation of awesome. It is. I have to say, like, everyone out here who's cosplaying, you guys rock. You've, you've killed it. This is what this is all about. Come out, show your support, have fun, and we'll see you next year. Bye. <laughs> thank you so much. Yes, thank you <laughs> so much, guys. It was a blast. It was so much fun. Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. I thank you so much to everybody who allowed <laughs> us to interview them for this video. And just everybody who went and was awesome and just had such... Uh, it's just, it's an amazing time. If you've never been to a con, you should go, even if you can't go to Comic-Con necessarily look up there's always one somewhat close to you you should go it's phenomenal yeah it's, it's so much fun. it really is it really is just such a good time and i think that a thing that a lot of the the cosplayers who we interviewed brought up in our videos was that you know one of the great things about cosplaying the thing that they all like the most about it is literally just walking around and talking to people well, it's just, and we've mentioned this before on the show, it's just such a phenomenal icebreaker that yeah. if you take the time and the money to create a living embodiment of a character, exactly. and then someone else who that character really affects them and has yeah. qualities that inspire them in their real life, totally, you're going to have an instant connection with somebody yeah. that you've never spoken to before. Yeah. And it's just immediately going into a conversation with super positive energy Absolutely. and just a mutual love for something is the coolest way to meet people. Well, and I mean, I think that, you know, with the cosplayers we were interviewing here in particular, it's like you interviewed a Harley Quinn. You also cosplay Harley Quinn. I interviewed a Sailor Moon. I don't cosplay Sailor oh, Moon, but well, I cosplay Sailor Venus. Yeah. And <laughs> also when Emma saw that Transformer, <laughs> I just, I hope that the floor of the con was somewhat clean, clean there because her jaw hit that floor. <laughs> And she just had to scoop it up and run over because that yeah that was so. I'm never gonna phenomenal. get over. I'm never gonna get over that Optimus Prime. <laughs> she was amazing, and the fact that it was a girl, it was so cool. Uh, if you guys don't know, I do the uh, Transformers Robots in Disguise after show here at at, uh, at our sister network After Buzz TV, uh, and I also want to give a huge shout out to uh, Megan Salinas, who you saw briefly in the end of the video there, for helping us with all of the video stuff for this she took we all literally of the footage could for not us. have done this without megan so yeah. thank, thank you, you megan. for being awesome yeah she's amazing and she also got a sailor moon blind box that's what that little uh, bit yeah. at the end of the video was there with all of us jumping up and down and getting excited because elena and megan both got uh sailor venus so you got sailor neptune no we got neptune yeah, you yeah. got venus i got i got sailor pluto then who got venus Did nobody no 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 because it was oh. all it was all outer senshi Oh. Yeah, Sailor Venus is one of the inner century. I thought that somebody got Venus. No, I have excited. a Sailor. I have a Sailor Venus, but it was it's from um my lovely friend Adam Ferry, who's also a cosplayer and a prop maker and just an all around oh. cool dude. Uh, yes, but lest you should think that uh, I myself didn't cosplay at all this weekend, you saw Elena uh, in the Jessica Rabbit outfit that she was wearing on Saturday of the con. I did 
cosplay. Uh, I on uh, Friday I was Zeke from an old Sega Genesis slash Super Nintendo game called Zombies Ate My Neighbors, along with Katie Cullen, who's also on the Transformers After Show with me. And is also amazing. And also was running around with us, helping us out with stuff all weekend, and is just an all around awesome human being. Uh, if you guys have never played Zombies Ate My Neighbors, you should Google it. <laughs> I just have to take a second and say that wig styling. <laughs> Thanks. Spot on. It's so good. Yeah, I did. I did style my wig for that. My favorite Emma too. She wakes up. She puts on this awesome outfit and then puts on her glasses and goes, "Well, not gonna be able to see anything today, but I feel like it looks awesome." <laughs> I'm like it does. It does. That's, I was gonna. That was the thing that I thought was so smart about Kia with those mesh contact lenses. It's like at least you can kind of see. Yeah, I have no idea. I mean, I was running into things with no glasses, so <laughs> I'm surprised yeah, that it you're is, able to navigate. It's very difficult to see with those blue and red 3D glasses, mostly because they make everything blue and red. They yeah. don't enhance things. They don't really work very well as sunglasses. That's why I tried to purposely plan out a schedule of my cosplay to some degree where if I know that I'm gonna have a break, that's when I wear my things that have more difficult accessories, mm -hmm. like the high heels or anything totally. else. Totally. And then days, like the first day we were there, I was like, I will be Black Canary because these are my comfortable boots yep. and a jacket. Yep. So. Good to go. Good <laughs> so to go. you're ready. Uh, and I also cosplayed Bulma from Dragon Ball uh, on uh, Thursday. <laughs> Uh, okay. These photos are courtesy of the San Diego Cosplay Society. I believe it's SD, co, sdcosplay.org. Uh, they have a Facebook page, which is where I found these. They gave me a little piece of paper when they took photos of me so I could find them. But yeah, I was real happy with this. I made this like the day before con because I just decided I wanted a new costume. And I was, I'd been planning on it. I had the fabric for it. I'd gotten the wig for it. But I don't know. I just kind of threw it together. Uh, I love it. I'm really happy with it, too. Can we go back one photo? Because yeah, yeah. I have to point out one thing that's awesome. This bag that you said your mom just made. Yeah. These, this is so versatile. It can go with anything. It really that is, is the amazing. perfect yeah. con prop. Yeah. So I had some people who were saying, like, because we mentioned that we like to incorporate our bags yes. into our cosplay. Yes. And so one of our questions was, what's the best way to do that if it's not a cosplay that necessarily has a bag? Right. Boom! Little it goes with like that. everything, and I mean, it looks so cool. It does. It looks really cool. The thing is, um, with Bulma, she does actually have yeah, this a little one pouch goes, like that. But this you could um, use for anything. You can use it yeah, over oh, no, and over. Yeah, I, over. Use, I use it with ever. I use it yeah. with my Renaissance Fair stuff. I use this bag all the time. Thanks, mom, for because, making this yeah, for then me. Yeah, then you can keep all your stuff in one place and then just attach it to each of your. Co if you had a Mad Max, boom, ready? boom, perfect. Yeah, oh, it's perfect. Yeah, little little bags like that are uh, are a fantastic thing. And yeah, I mean, someday I will make an actual. Uh, turquoise one like she has but i was like it's i don't have time cool. and yeah this it reminds works. me of all the bags that i would get so excited about in world of warcraft when i would find like yeah, one of the dude. big loot bags totally. and i was like that's what that looks totally. like it looks like it should be filled yes. with gems uh and in addition to <laughs> cosplaying uh jessica rabbit uh, elena also cosplayed a couple of other things uh, she wore black canary as she mentioned there she is with batman this <laughs> was super cool. This was the <laughs> first thing that I walked into when I walked into the con was this awesome Batman that had the poles attached to the wings. So he could walk around normally, but then when he took a picture, he would just out of nowhere like boom and you were like, this is so cool. <laughs> so that was kind of a cool way to kick off the con. Um, but we were talking about kind of, you know, the different Kind of tips and tricks that people yeah. have asked and a lot of people have touched on kind of closet cosplay yeah totally and what are some good suggestions for that this one is yeah <laughs> so easy this is the easiest thing that i have it's incredibly comfortable it's flat boots and fingerless gloves a jacket that i just cut and hemmed and a choker with just yellow electrical tape on the choker and on the gloves and yep. that is it amazing took me maybe like 20 minutes to do all of it right and yet you're instantly and recognizable and, and you wear it all the time it's it's like michelle was saying on our sailor moon episode it's like you just need the tell mm -hmm. and people will know what you are and it's fun yeah it's fun because you feel like you can go out but you're in something that is That's, also secure right. and that also and comfortable yeah and comfortable yeah i will say however again going back to the what are some good con tips 
Nobody else will tell you this, but I swear by onesies. <laughs> I keep a onesie with me at all times because it does get cold at night and I put a onesie over my cosplay and also if I'm wearing something that I don't want to move around but I want to go and play like in the Adult Swim Carnival or something. Right, totally. Pull a onesie out of your bag and you're always set to go. It's true. Elena does travel with a Batman onesie at all times during <laughs> cons. <laughs> and uh, in life. Yeah. But, and know. now we have a we have a collection of other photos from our con experience there we are with megan megan is phenomenal so just another quick shout out to her yes. for being so much fun so yep. we went and got dinner at dick's last resort <laughs> and then we were talking about too about closet cosplay yeah, exactly this is our good friend melissa who is awesome and she wanted to come down for the con and said you know i want to dress up but i didn't have time to really make anything I'm gonna do Amy Pond, and just by having the bag, the marks mm -hmm. yep. on our arm, yeah, and then, tracking the time she's seen the silence, yeah, yeah, literal just things from your closet that you put together, and it was awesome. People were stopping, and they're like, "You're a good Amy Pond, we like it." So yeah, it's yeah, it's always fun to dress up. Yep, it is. <laughs> and then you, you go us a to bit events. About this, uh, this Star Wars Battlefront thing here. Well, that's the thing. The one thing about being in cosplay is that you are kind of locked in that universe and yeah. then you go to awesome events mm -hmm. and they have star wars photo ops and then you just have to find a way to meld it so this is my starly wars <laughs> awesome. i got a giggle from marissa yeah, i feel like that victory. was yeah we went this whole episode without a pun so there you go i know there you go um so yeah so <laughs> There are lots of fun things to do at Comic-Con, and then you just caption it with a fun hashtag. Hashtag. Uh, and many thanks yes. to Michelle. Uh, Michelle is like the party queen of San Diego Comic-Con. She, uh, specifically for the website that she works for, Defective Geeks, they were doing party coverage. Like, it was just coverage of all the parties and outside events of San Diego Comic-Con, and so she was nice enough to uh, point us in the direction yeah. of some of them, including the totally awesome Dragon Ball Z party that we went to. Yes, but this was actually at the uh, Fashionably Nerdy yeah, Mixer, the, uh, which mixer. was a huge highlight for us it as was. well. It was yeah. Everybody who works with Stephanie and everybody who works over there is just phenomenal. And big shout out to Who's It's and What's It's for this Yay! awesome... Robin Hood the Who crossover shirt it's that so I'm good. obsessed with. Yes. So that's another fun thing about content. You can find all the best I know. nerd swag well, and, and all the and, coolest brands. And the hilarious story about Who's It's and What's It's is the girl Tiffany Mink who runs it. She and I went to college together. Yeah. And we had not seen each other since college. But during Comic-Con, uh, we ran into each other and we both were like, I've been Facebook stalking you for years. <laughs> That's and, just uh, another. Yeah. I feel like I'm just the con spokesperson yeah, totally. at this point. Like, I'm like, reason number cons. 1 million nine hundred and thirty seven. <laughs> you get to see friends you haven't seen in a while and then nerd out over how cool both of your stuff and is. And how so. your lives just got to be so awesome. Because you're both at Comic Con. Yes. But yeah, so huge, huge shout out to <clears throat> Tiffany and yes. to uh, Who's It's and What's It's. Their stuff is really cool, so yes. you should check it out. This was the Dragon Ball Z party. This was the Dragon Ball Z party, <laughs> which was awesome. We had a lot of fun at that party. Food and themed drinks and things yes. abound. But I do... The main reason that this is here is so I can tell the story of the guy who came up to Emma in her amazing oh. <laughs> Bulma costume. She he goes, so who are you? And she's like, I'm Bulma. It That's says it why across it my chest. Bulma. He goes, from what? She's like, from... Dra Dragon Ball. <laughs> it's on the wall. Yeah, so. like, why are you at a Dragon Ball party if you don't know who I am? Drinks and food, and I will not <laughs> shame you for that. So you do you, sir. But he, he does yeah, when you go to the go cons, here. Yeah. <laughs> I go to the cons, just like look around a little bit at the party that you're at, because yeah. if somebody's dressed up from that thing. It makes them feel good if you know that. It does. Uh, and so now I want to catch up on uh, some viewer submissions. Uh, so basically, we pre-taped our Sailor Moon episodes. We had a couple more um, Sailor Moon fan submissions come in a little bit after the episode. And we didn't even, we, we had so much to talk about in that episode, we kind of ran out of time to give them proper attention anyway. Uh, so this photo here uh, was submitted by Unbelievable Cosplay. She is Sailor Mercury in that. Her friend Tammy Aww. is Sailor Jupiter and Ayumi is Mars. 
And she uh, did some photo editing on it to make them look a little more magical, they which I awesome. love. Yeah, we have another photo from them as well. I choose to believe that those sparkles Yay! just follow them around they the do. con. They do, yeah. They just walked around the con like that. <laughs> it looks so awesome. Thank you so much, Unbelievable, for uh, this submission. It was awesome. Uh, we also have uh, some cosplay submissions from Tentacle Grape Cosplay. Now, this is crazy to me, okay? Because this it's a, it's a mom and daughter who make Sailor Moon cosplays. This is both of them as Queen Nehalania. <laughs> the villain from the, the dream arc of, of the Sailor Moon manga or Sailor Moon Super S. What? That amazing. Is amazing. I love just family cosplay in general, I, I think is phenomenal. Yes. I saw a Super Mario carrying his tiny Luigi and I was like, oh, come so on. Cute. Stop with the cute. So cute. Uh, and then there was also, uh, there's a, oh, another shot so of her cute. in her, her baby Nehalania outfit, but she also cosplays Princess Small Lady Serenity, uh, which is right there. <laughs> That Can you die? is the cutest thing I've ever she's seen so in my life. She's so freaking cute. So yeah, she's she's a uh, chibi is uh, in her little in her little small lady princess dress. Tiny humans, I, I love know. you. You look so cute when you're in your cosplay. I know. We have we have more uh, baby cosplays to show on the show today too. But uh, before that, we have some photos of uh, Max Gray cosplay, which he found us on Twitter and was nice enough to email us some uh, cosplay photos of him. It's uh, Deathstroke from Arkham Origins, and he also gave credit to his photographer, uh, who is MC Illusions, and these are just amazing. If we ever get into uh, an episode where we're talking about Batman villains in general, like this is this is incredible, <clears throat> and we would love to uh, get more details from you on uh, how things were constructed and etc. I know it's phenomenal. Elena, it looks Elena's so good. I'm just if you, staring I was say, in if awe. You're, if you're uh, listening on iTunes, uh, Elena's just flabbergasted. I'm just swooning. <laughs> I'm just swooning at this point. Like I know. it's just so good. Oh, you you uh, you tapped into the thing Elena loves most, Batman. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then uh, also on our Facebook page, I found a, a couple of other uh, submissions that I wanted to share on the show because they are adorable. Uh, so this is from Brad Bray. This is his son dressed as Captain America. And we also have uh, from Tony Mallet. Uh, that's uh, his son's earliest foray into classic cosplay. <sighs> that is Deadpool. That is is awesome yep. and uh in the grand tradition of excellent parenting he has also memed this child as captain america which should be the <laughs> next image that we have there standing for truth justice and the american way parenting win yep that is a parenting, parenting win, win. <laughs> So yeah, those were the uh, the things that we wanted to catch up on uh, in terms of viewer submissions. We also want to address a couple of questions. Um, we don't have too much time left, but we'll get to a couple of your questions, and then we'll do another episode like this in the future and hopefully be able to do a live chat too so you guys can ask us some questions live on the air. Uh, first of all, I wanted to... Uh, Elena addressed a little bit uh, from Mr. Devro on Twitter who uh, asked about a chance to talk about cheap improvisation ideas when it comes to cosplay. I think Elena mm -hmm. kind of covered that with the uh, yellow electrical I saw your tape. tape today. Yes. <laughs> and electrical tape should never be uh, like underrated no. because it is no. it's easy and it's awesome. Well, that's awesome. like Jen uh, Madonna was saying if all you have is duct tape, great. Make something out of duct tape. Find a creative fun way to do it. Mm -hmm. Uh Maxfield Stanton, who's uh, one of my fans from the Sailor Moon podcast I do called Love and Justice, uh asked, "So Emma, how was it cosplaying as Bulma? You did a fantastic job. Also, see any good pretty guardian Sailor Moon cosplays? Probably not." I didn't. Uh, one of these days, one of these days, I might cosplay Princess Sailor Moon and or Dark Mercury. Uh, but cosplaying Bulma was a revelation. Here's why. Short wig. Amazing. Yes. Uh, also, sneakers. Um, I just want all of my cosplays to have sneakers from now on. I was so comfortable. I do a Zoe Harriet from old school Doctor Who. Yeah. And that is just short wig, jumpsuit, and flats. Yep. <laughs> um, and then I wanted to address uh, Kyle Dalton and, and a couple other people as well, uh, both on Twitter and on Facebook, have been asking. Uh, they're like, oh, seriously, I love the show. So first of all, thank you so much. Uh, we put a lot of work into it, so we're glad that you, are, uh, you guys are enjoying it. But he uh, asks if we could maybe get some 
some male cosplayers on the show. Uh, the ones that he recommended, uh, Michael Hamm and Nathan DeLuca, uh, are in Canada, along with the original voice cast of Sailor Moon, who I did a panel for at Amazing Las Vegas Comic Con, and I love them. I want them to adopt me and make me part of their family. Um, but uh, but yeah, I mean, I think that, that that's a really good thing to bring up, that we really should uh, yes. get, we should get more of a male presence yeah. in here. And also, I think, you know, we've had a couple of people throw out, too, about the uh, kind of gender bending cosplays. And those are always really fun. Yeah. So. Yeah. I would love to do an episode on that. And Brad Bray asked uh, how to get patterns for masks and kind of the best way to do that. There is a great website co called Cosplay <laughs> Tutorials, and they have one just Cosplay Tutorials slash list slash masks. And they have pretty much every kind of material that you could want to work with so yes. that's the one that I recommend that's the one that I use I concur <laughs> I defer to Elena on this <laughs> just like I defer to Elena on wigs and uh, I actually am trying to find who it was that said oh can Elena oh it was uh, uh, Kiara Thela cosplay uh, said can Elena please do a wig episode and we will definitely do a wig episode at some point and then just as one final thing uh, Tony Mallet, who submitted the, the meme baby Captain America asks who would win in a fight Gandalf the Grey versus Dumbledore or Gandalf the White versus Dumbledore so basically in, in Gandalf's various forms would he be Dumbledore Elena at gunpoint what do you say I say Merlin busts in it's like <laughs> what up I'm taking uh, over so uh, there you go <laughs> oh man and I am gonna say uh Gandalf the gray maybe not but Gandalf the white I mean he like came back from the dead sort of maybe unclear. yeah but Dumbledore's uh, got a posse now like he does he, he, does. he rolls like 12 he does, he does deep, like so. deep so <laughs> deep just saying oh, I don't know how much your elf can help you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is all the time that we have for today, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching our show. And keep keep tweeting your comments, questions, etc. at us. Uh, you can find us all on Twitter at The Cosplay Coach. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Emma Fife. You can find me on Twitter at Elena Jordan, A-L-A-N-A. -A -A, and you can find me on Instagram at That Elena Jordan Girl. And uh, you can find both Elena and myself on various shows at AfterBuzzTV.com, our sister network here. I do Transformers, Robots in Disguise, Sailor Moon Crystal, though this might be our last episode this coming week. Uh, and but we'll be back for Face Off yeah. soon, and Emma and I will both be there for that one, so be sure to check it out. Yes, and uh, as always, guys, remember to go over to iTunes, comment, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. And thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you guys all again soon. Bye. From producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire Popcorn Talk Network, we would like to thank you for tuning in. For questions or comments, be sure to visit popcorntalk.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of the Popcorn Talk Network. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Popcorn Talk Network or its owners or principals. 